Junior and Senior are brought in for a second round of questioning, and during this time, Junior makes a shocking statement. He states that his father has never been arrested and that he is 100% hetero and has never had intimate contacts with boys or men. This was information that he offered willingly, without question. Why did he feel the need to share that information up front if the Aruban police weren't asking? Why wouldn't it raise red flags to the police? Why wouldn't it prompt them to at least do a simple background check on these men? This is episode four, The Evidence. After an intense three-day search and no sign of Max, Aruban police call off the search and officially rule Max as lost at sea. This is devastating news to Yvonne and her family. How could this be the end when Max still wasn't found? How could the Aruban government not do more? How could they not do their due diligence and investigate the men who clearly were involved in Max's disappearance? At this point, there were more questions than answers. On May 18, 2004, Yvonne, Dominique, and Aunt Pat headed out on a flight back home to Michigan, without Max. Ironically, they run into Junior and Senior, who were on the same flight departing Aruba, During this time, Senior approaches Yvonne and asks her if he can send her flowers on Max's anniversary. As if these men haven't caused this family enough grief, they make a statement so off-putting and chilling. Yvonne doesn't even respond to Senior's request, but his statement sticks with her to this day. When Yvonne and Dominique return home, they struggle to find normalcy again. They're now not only grieving the loss of George, but now Max. Dominique returns to school only to be shocked by the announcement of Max's disappearance over the school intercom. Due to the lack of media coverage of Max's case, there were so many conflicting rumors going around about what really happened to Max in Aruba. Many were told it was simply a tragic accident, and details of that day and the two men were completely eliminated. The following year, in the summer of 2005, Yvonne appoints the help of Detective Corey Williams. Corey was the cold case detective on the Oakland County child killing case from the 70s. Detective Williams immediately notices the inconsistencies in Senior's story and does a background check on him something the Aruban police refuse to do. And what he uncovers is very disturbing. He discovers that Senior was arrested in L.A. County back in 1981 for crimes against children. What he finds out next will shock you. One of the victims is his adoptive son, Junior. He was only 14 years old at the time of the assault, the same age as Max. Junior reportedly contacted the police to report his stepfather, and that is what prompted the investigation and arrest of Senior at that time. However, it's unknown what happened to the case after that, as no other information was available. Shortly after, Detective Williams contacts the FBI to open Max's case. The FBI is unable to get in contact with Senior, but does contact Junior. They conduct a formal interview with Junior, who of course sticks with his original statement, claiming no criminal or wrongdoing. Unfortunately, in October of 2008, the FBI is pulled from Max's case to focus on terrorism cases, and Max's case goes cold. It isn't until 2016 when Yvonne is surprisingly contacted by one of Junior's ex-girlfriends. 
She's eager to tell Ivan about her interactions with Junior and Senior after learning about Max's story. She said that Senior mentioned Max to her one time and stated that what happened really hurt Junior because he was really close to him. When the girlfriend brings up Max to Junior, he immediately gets defensive, and it turns into a huge argument. An argument so disturbing that the girlfriend was afraid to bring up Max's name again. She also states that Junior did mention that he was sexually assaulted as a young boy, but would never mention by who. She also tells Yvonne about the encounters with Senior and her son. She said at first, it seemed nice that Senior wanted to bond with her son, but it quickly became uncomfortable and disturbing. She recalls Senior asking her 10-year-old son to constantly sit on his lap. Another ex-girlfriend of Junior's also comes forward. She says that Junior made a statement to her before, saying that the only good thing his father ever did for him was get him out of some trouble in Aruba. She also tells a disturbing encounter she had with Junior when she questions him after hearing him saying Max's name in his sleep. Junior becomes enraged that she's asking about Max and holds her at gunpoint, strangles her with a cord, and cuts her all over her body. Luckily, she is able to escape, and Junior is arrested. Yvonne shares this information with Detective Williams, and he looks into the case and contacts investigators. Unfortunately, he's told that the case fell apart and was chalked up to heavy drug usage and drinking. Despite nearly killing this woman, Junior is only sentenced to two years probation. It is unbelievable how these men continue to not be held accountable for their actions. When will the truth finally come to light? Will Max's case ever get the attention that it deserves? And when will there be justice for Max DeVries? In the next episode, we uncover the theory that Detective Williams has about the timeline of events that took place in Aruba and what he believes happened to Max. We also look into why Max's case didn't get the media attention it should have and what the Aruban government is hiding. Episode 5, Deadly Paradise, is available right now. Make sure to follow us on social media at Unseen Truth Podcast and visit unseentruthpodcast.com for more case information.